One of the most important things that you should be aware of is the manual when you're building a Voron 0.2. I just want to point out some pretty important things before we dive right in. The first part of the manual talks about part printing guidelines and th this is really important. If this is your first build, I would recommend going with the Voron PIF program or buying parts from Boxy Prints. And I do have another video about some of the trade-offs with the different options for printing parts. The next part of this manual, um, as we get into page 8 or so, is just talking about the various different ty types of fasteners. So here you can see we've got button head, we've got socket head, and those are all going to be abbreviated accordingly. So you might see BHCS or SCHS. That's what that means. Make sure you pick the right type because it is designed for those types of screws. You could get to a point where if you use the wrong screw, even though you got the right length, the head might kind of you know cause a problem, especially on these flat head ones. So these need to be flat so things lay over them typically. And of course you've got the attention bubble here. It's kind of like, hey, make sure you don't screw this up or you really pay attention. Then we're gonna take our M2 nuts and we're going to go, we're gonna space them out every other hole. And we're going to do that for all five of these. Now the instructions do say you can populate all of them. I've never done that. There's really no need to, but if you want to, you can. Here's the method with the tweezers. I think it's probably a little easier for me because my fingers are a little fat. On the last one, you just skip that and leave two. And then we'll just repeat that for the rest of these. And now we've got everything all wrapped up. You might want to just double check that all your nuts are in there and move on to the next step. Now we've got our rails out. I've actually got some black tape over mine and I've already prepped them. And I'll show a quick little video on how I do that. All right, I'm going to show a quick way on how to lube your rails. If, you've, uh, don't, if you don't have Mobilux EP2, um, you can also use this WD-40 Specialist White Lithium Grease. You can get this pretty much any hardware store or big box store in the U.S. If you do have the Mobilux EP2 and you have a syringe, you can load it through these holes and that should hit. But if you don't, this is another great option. But I, I definitely recommend using a paper towel when you do this because it's going to spray everywhere. So you can either, um, you can come in here on the side and just spray it like that. And you can also come on the other side Give it a good spray, make sure it kind of coats it all the way around. And then you can also spray in here if you want to. But once again, um, good idea to use a paper towel over it. And then once you're done, just wipe it up. Get all that residue off there. Another option I like to use is this uh, Super Lube Multi-Use Synthetic Oil. That's what I was using on these before, and this, is, this stuff's good too. It works just fine. So the, the manual talks about putting zip ties on the end of these. That's definitely a good idea because you do not want your carriage sliding off. You're, there's little tiny ball bearings in these rails carriages. And if you lose one of those, they're, they're pretty tough to get back in. Sometimes there's these little plastic or rubber inserts that are in there. Leave those in. Or you can do what I did and just put some black tape on them. Next up, we're going to be populating the E-extrusions with the rail carriers that we built previously. Now, this is important to know. If this is your first build, especially, there are a lot of different types of extrusions, um, but 90% of them are all the same length. Um, some of the key differences are holes in them. So you might have, like, here's an extrusion that has a hole here, and a hole here, so it's really the same hole. Most of them are tapped on the ends as well, meaning that they'll accept an M3 screw. But you're going to need to look at the manual to understand what the different extrusion types are. So if you look at the manual, it will call out, you know, like the E extrusion, these do have one hole, just actually the one that I just showed is the one that you want. So the problem is though, there's also other extrusions that might look a lot like that, but might have, you know, two holes instead. So you gotta be really careful because the worst thing that can happen is you can be building your Voron and realize you use the, the wrong extrusion and then you got to go back and undo work. So that, that's not fun. So one, one suggestion I would have would be to organize all your extrusions by the classification here. And then maybe use a sticky note or something to, you know, so you know which one you're going to pull from. Here's an example of the A extrusion. It has no holes at all. Now these particular ones are tapped though. 
Okay, I've gone ahead and laid mine out. You can see I've got the A and B. In my case, they were the same. So as I mentioned, the A and B, the only difference in the manual is that the ends are tapped, otherwise there's no holes. I've got C and H, which are also the same, same difference where uh, the difference is tapping, but they these both have two holes. D is, uh, is one that has three holes. So you've got holes here, holes here, and then you rotate it and you've got a hole here. So what I've done in the past, I think on my first build, I accidentally used a D one where I needed a C. So that's a pretty common mistake, so make sure you don't do that. And then we've got our E extrusions, which kind of have the distance here with one hole on them. This does not include the top pad extrusions. I've set those aside over here. Okay, I've got an E extrusion, and I'm going to go ahead and put the nut carrier in. I've always ran them this way and never had any issues with my builds, and everything fits fine. Some people swear by doing them the other way. It really doesn't matter. Uh, make sure that when you just rinse and repeat with the second one. And if you're having problems getting these in, you can definitely try them upside down, different orientation. Once you put them in though, they should be fine and everything should stay in place. They shouldn't uh, slip out. Okay, next up, we're gonna go ahead and put in some M2 by sixes, uh, ideally socket heads, and then we're gonna mount them into the, populate them into the nut carrier here. So you should be able to, and just keep in mind, your, you don't want your rail slipping and sliding. Also make sure that they're running smoothly. This is kind of your last good chance to really be able to oil them. It's always easier to lubricate them from underneath, but mine are feeling pretty good. All right, I've got my screwdriver here. I'm going to go ahead and try to do my best to line these up. I'll start with this one right here. Let's go ahead and tighten that down. And we're also going to be using this little guy here. This is the rail centering tool. So you can just kind of stick that on there and make sure that your rail stays centered. And just remember where you put your screws. It should be every other hole with two on the end. And now I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the same process for this rail. Before you get everything snug down real good, um, you're going to want to check to make sure you've got 38 millimeters on the end where the hole is. So the hole, kind of see, maybe, is right there. So I've got, <clears throat> I'm actually, I, I need to slide it down more that way. So just go ahead and loosen things up a tad. And then go ahead and just take your straight edge and go right to about 38. So I'm almost there. Okay, that's pretty good right there. And then go ahead and place your rail guide over. Make sure you stay centered. And then tighten that one down. Now be careful if you're going to move these around. Because the worst thing you want is for this to come sliding off. Now mine, my carriages have a little bit of preload on it. So they're not going to fall easily, but yours may not. So if that's the case, just use your rubber stoppers or your black tape to secure them in place. And now I'm just repeating for the next set. Going to do the exact same steps. All right, this one is now done, and I have gone ahead and double checked my clearance, and it looks right on at 38 with the side where the hole is in the extrusion. I'm going to go ahead and tape my rails down, my rail carriages down, so I don't have to worry about them sliding off. For the next steps, we're just going to put our carriage end stops on the end, and this what this does is it helps make sure that your carriage won't go over. Now, one thing that I do want to talk about are these no-drop nuts. These are optional, but I can't imagine doing a build without them. I'm using the square nuts, but there are also um, hex nut mods available. It's really the same thing. In my extrusion, square nuts work a little bit better because this is Misumi. But when I used LDO, I would use the hex nuts. So the, the main idea here is you want to put your nut in the no-drop nut. It should fit in there just fine. And then it doesn't really matter which way you orient it. Then you're just going to slide it in to the extrusion like this. So that's all there is to it. And then you're going to do the same thing here. And then we're just going to thread that screw into here. We're going to use an M3x8 button head. 
So I'll go ahead and get that ready. And then I'm just gonna take this, it doesn't matter which way. And then you just line it up over and just tighten it down. That's it. And then you're pretty much done. So we'll just move that a little bit closer. You don't want it hanging off the end of this and you want it to stop this, the carriage from going all the way over where it could lose a little ball bearing. And I'm just repeating the process for the other rail. And then I'm gonna go ahead and torque it down. There we go. Okay, so the Y rails are done now. We're gonna set these aside. And now we're going to grab the next extrusion for the Z rails. The Z rails are going to use the C extrusions. So grab those out of your pile, marked C. And then you're going to know, double check that they have the two holes and that they do not have three holes. So if you see another hole on this side, you've, you've grabbed the wrong one. Once again, we're gonna take our nut carriers and with the holes face, oops, with the holes facing up, we're gonna go ahead and insert these in. And once again, they really should be stay, they should stay once you put them in there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and install the rails onto, these, onto the extrusion here. Same drill as before. We're eventually going to, um, <clears throat> so we're, we're going to also be able to adjust the height on these. So don't put, a, don't put the screws in super tight yet. Just leave a little adjustment in there. You're gonna go every other screw, except for the ends here. It's a good idea to make sure they're nice and centered as you go. And once again, make sure that you're putting them in with the holes on facing up. So we basically want to get about 33 millimeters from the end, from the top. So it doesn't really matter which side's the top. So I'm gonna loosen these up, make sure I can move them. They shouldn't be very tight. All right, now I'm just gonna move them just a smidge. Okay, that's 33. Gonna hold it and tighten it down. And make sure that you put them on good and tight on this step. It's pretty important for these Z ones to be centered perfectly because otherwise you're gonna get some binding. So once you have them in the right position, so you really don't want any resistance as you drag your guide along. And it should be the same amount of resistance. So if you're feeling a little tightness, that means it's going this way or this way. But mine are all pretty good. And then just double check your height. Yep, 33 right on the button. And then we're just gonna rinse and repeat for this one. Here's a little trick that I learned. You can kind of eyeball it up and that way you're not gonna be spending as much time on the measuring. So just kind of eyeball up the screw locations. Okay, I went ahead and lined them up so they're pretty much exactly the same. Okay, I'm gonna do the pressure check again. Feels a little bit bound up in here, so I'm gonna adjust. I'll loosen all these up. Okay, that feels pretty good. That feels pretty good. So now I'm gonna tighten down the middle. All right, I think we're good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tape these guys down a little bit too, just to be safe. Before we're completely done, we need to go ahead and put these rail stops on. And you're gonna use the longer side so, which is the top, so where you have your 33 millimeters. Go ahead and insert your uh, nut into your no drop. And then just go ahead and work that into the extrusion. And you're gonna go all the way, almost all the way up to the rail with these guys. And you're gonna use an M3 by eight. So I've got the M3 by eight here now. I'm going to go ahead and sink that in. And then we'll just repeat for this side. I'm going to just slide it down just a tiny bit. Okay.